The Occupy movement insists the protests are not over. In New York, a few dozen demonstrators returned today after the police removed their camp yesterday. In Seattle, last night, an 84-year-old woman was hit with pepper spray as she fought with as officers fought with the marchers. But in Los Angeles, Bill Whitaker tells us the protesters have at least one big supporter. With cities across the country saying occupiers have overstayed their welcome, L.A. Mayor Antonio Villaraigosa still has the welcome mat out for now. I'm very proud of the fact uh, that here in Los Angeles uh, we stand uh, for the First Amendment. Still, after 47 days taking their stand around L.A. City Hall, even some occupiers seem unclear exactly what they stand for. Why are you out here? I don't know. We're here because we, we feel that the system doesn't work anymore. Prepare for a long zigzag struggle. Tom Hayden, whose activism in the 1960s thrust him into politics, says occupiers might lose their encampments, but even without a focused message, they're gaining ground in the political debate. Many Americans share their frustration. It's created real change in the climate of discussion in America towards jobs and Wall Street. The 400 richest Americans now own more of America than the bottom 150 million Americans. Last night at Berkeley, on the steps where the student free speech movement began 47 years ago, former Clinton administration Labor Secretary Robert Reich told campus protesters they've caught America's attention. Now comes the hard part, turning protest into policy. There's really only one way to turn a grassroots movement into a political movement. Uh, and we saw that with regard to the civil rights movement and the anti-Vietnam movement, and that is through political organizing. It's much harder uh, to go from moral outrage to real practical change, uh, but I expect that this movement will be coalescing. But it might not coalesce around either the Democrats or the Republicans. Their anger at the economic and political system is so deep and so wide, Scott, that right now they blame both parties. Thank you, Bill.